Hey everyone, it is Caleb. This video we're going to be talking about references inside of C++. This is the hands-on section, so if you need a little extra of the fundamentals, check out the previous video, which was just an introduction to references. We're going to cover some of that material here, but if you just need a little extra, you can go watch that video. Now, there's two things before we get started. First, I want you guys to guess what beverage I am drinking. Second is, of course, our sponsor. And no, our sponsor is not this beverage. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so here we are with like the most basic C++ program. It does nothing. And we're going to create a variable. So int a is 10. And we're just gonna go through some of the examples we talked about in the previous video. What we can do now is we can create a reference using the ampersand and we can give it a name such as b and assign it the value a. Now, what we can do is we can print these values. So if we print A, and we print an N line, and then we print B, let's see what we get. We get 10, and we get 10. So before you get too deep in this, trying different things, I want to introduce you to a really useful operator, the address of operator. And anytime you prefix a variable with an ampersand, such as this right here, that is going to get the address of this variable. So it's gonna tell you where it's located in memory, wherever that is. Now, I do wanna call out that we also use the ampersand here. However, it's not exactly the same meaning. This is basically the syntax to create a reference, which is different than getting the address of a variable. Now, the very first thing you should notice is that these are exactly the same, which is what we want. That's because B refers to the same location as A. So what I wanna do is I want to just change some values A and B and see how things get affected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do another line of output, but for this one, I'm not gonna do the address. I'm just going to print the actual values. And just a reminder, to use the reference variable, you don't actually need to prefix it with anything. You just treat it like any other variable. Unlike pointers, which we're gonna get into, which require a little bit more syntax. But basically, I want to print the values of A and B here, and then I want to modify one of these. So we can say A is 15, and then I want to print the values afterwards. So let's run this. So we got a couple different things on here. So we start off with the values 10. We can then change one of these to 15 and note that they still both point to the same exact location in memory. So naturally they're going to contain the same value. You can do the same exact thing by assigning to B and you're going to get a similar result where both of them are changed. That's why people will say references are like an alias. It's a way you can refer to the same data with a different name. You can refer to it by A or the alias B. Now let's just step it up a notch and let's create another variable C and assign it the value 100. And what I wanna do is I want to assign to B C. So this is a point of confusion because a lot of people think, oh, B is a reference. We're just going to change it to refer to C now but it's not exactly how it works. Because if you remember what B is, it's the same thing as A. So when we say B is C, we're kind of like saying A is C. So what that means is B is always gonna point to A, and when we assign it a value like another variable, it's going to replace A. So when we run this, you can see that A and B still both point to the same exact address, like always. And that value is changed to 100 because that's the value at C. So that was just an aside. We're not gonna be working with C anymore here. So let's just go back to what we had where we just changed the value of B. So that is my first example of references. It's just a way to create an alias, but the more common use for references is when we're passing data to functions or returning data from functions. So if we go up here and we create a function and we'll just say void, we'll just give it some name such as work, 
and this is going to take an integer, we'll call it x, it could be named whatever you want. And inside of here, I want to increment the value of x. So let's go ahead and clean up main sum. So I'm gonna get rid of this reassignment as well as getting rid of the addresses. And just to keep things a little bit cleaner, I'm not gonna put everything on a new line. I'm actually gonna replace this with just a space. And same thing here. So just put a space here. So now when we run this, we get 10, 10, 10, 10 on the same line. It's just a little bit cleaner. Now between these two prints, I want to invoke this work function. So we can say work and we can pass in A. When we run this, you can see A still has the value 10 before and after the function invocation. So this is normal function behavior. Whenever we change the data inside of the function, that's not gonna be seen on the outside. So let's go through a different example where we're actually using an ampersand here. So now X is a reference variable. Now when we run this, you can see we get 10, 10 beforehand and then after the function call, we get 11, 11. So A has the value 11 and B points to A. So it also has the value 11. So you will immediately notice whenever we make this a reference, it allows us to change the arguments that were passed in, in this case, A. The other benefit is it can save memory if you're working with larger objects. So for example, we could create a vector and let's just create an integer vector, call it data, and we'll just put some data in here, like so. And we can create an overload of this, so we'll just say void work, and this one is going to take a vector of type int, and we'll just call it data. And what we can do in here is we can actually change this data, so let's just say data index is zero, and assign this the value 1,000, uh, 10,000. And then what I wanna do is I want to print the data before and after the function invocation. So we're going to output data index zero, and we don't even need the rest of this. So let's just get rid of this here, like so. And then we're going to pass in data to the work function, and then output data index zero like so. All right, so just to look at this real quick, we create this vector data, we output its first element, we pass it to the function, and then we output it again. So run this, and we need to include vector. So up here at the top, just say include vector, like so, run this now. Uh, for some reason I put this in a string because I'm dumb. All right, let's go ahead and fix that because we're working with integers. Run this, and you can see now Beforehand, we have the value 10, we run the function, and we still have the value 10. However, if we make this a reference by putting the ampersand, run it now, and that change is seen on the outside after the function call. So now not only do we change the data inside, but also we're only having one vector in memory. If this data was a really, really large vector, that might actually save a lot of memory. Nine times out of 10, more like 99 times out of 100, you're not gonna have to worry about it because the majority of you guys watching this are not going to be working with data large enough that it really, really matters and just passing by value should be fine. However, in some certain situations, you may want to pass by reference to save on memory. But you shouldn't go ahead and make all of your functions reference variables to save on memory because that can actually introduce side effects if the data is changed inside of the function. And to me, it seems like a premature optimization where you're trying to make your code faster and there's probably better ways you can do it. And you don't really need to do that quite yet. So that is your introduction to references and how to create reference prints.